Hey, so for a while, I felt like the internet was changing the way that I think. And it's only been recently that I found research to back up this notion. So I'd like to share that with you and also show you how you can prevent the internet from rotting your brain. So I love the abundance of the web. Uh, these days, we're consuming 12 hours of media at home each day at work. We're checking our emails and other stuff 37 times per hour. It's overwhelming. So there's this constant shifting of attention and we're playing this mental hopscotch and our brains are the ones that are paying the price. The web, the internet can be addictive. Uh, when we log on, we connect, there's actually this dopamine squirt in our brains. And it's an addiction uh, no different than drugs or alcohol, food, and it's pretty scary stuff. So I got turned on to this stuff, or I found out about this stuff a couple years ago. There was an article by Nicholas Carr where he talked about the effect of the internet on cognition. And he was saying that reading on the web is shallower than reading text. And he specifically talked about hyperlinks in test, text, which we're all familiar with, we can click away. And he said that it's training our brains to bounce around. Well, this resonated with me. Uh, and he continued his argument in a book that just came out uh, maybe two months ago. And he said, the internet is actually a medium of interruption. And it's changing the way that we process information. Uh, and he said, there's this chronic state of chaos that continues long after we log off from the computer. So our brains are actually getting rewired. And he cites some eye-opening research. They took a group of op two groups of office workers where they gave them tasks. And the second group, they continued to add distractions. And naturally, they did worse than the first group. But when they took away the distractions, the second group continued to do worse on the same task. Also, they gave another study, they gave two groups of students a presentation on the country of Mali. And uh, one was a text-only presentation, the other was text plus audio and video that they could stop and start whenever they want. In that one, 25 per the, in the second group, they did 25% worse than the first group. Uh, in another study, they, kids were shown a presentation, one group had a news crawl across the bottom, just like CNN. Now, they did 25% worse as well. So all these studies represent their metaphors for things that we use or we experience on the internet. Imagine if you did 25% better at work, right? So there is some good news. There's cognitive neuroscientists like Steven Pinker who say, well, this is bunk. When we learn something new, uh, our brains change. And uh, there's no long-term definitive studies, neurological studies, that have yielded results that support this. And actually, they point to a growing body of evidence that say that it's actually good for us. It causes subconscious processing, uh, which helps us solve difficult problems. Others say it increases our creativity, especially when it comes to solving creative problems, these distractions, like the internet cause. And most of us these days are tasked with solving creative problems at work. So what do you do about it? I, look at, I take this very seriously, believe it or not. And I... Uh, I look at this like a martial art. It's, uh, it takes awareness and it's a continual practice. The first thing I recommend is coming up with a definitive to-don't list when it comes to the internet. Uh, one of the tools that I use exhaustively is a service called Rescue Time, uh, which tracks literally every minute I spend online. I look at it at least once a week and it's like a food journal. If you do it for a week or two or a month, uh, you'll get hyper aware of where you're spending your time and your attention. Uh, the other thing is I try to minimize distractions as much as possible. Turn off notifications. When I write, I use darkroom. I try to cut out everything else. But probably the most effective thing that I've done is simply cut out the internet for a good chunk of my day. When I start work most days, I work 60 minutes, take a small break, work another 60 minutes, take a small break, another 30 minutes, take a small break with absolutely no internet. This has probably had the greatest effect on my productivity. Uh, David Foster Wallace probably had the best quote that I'm aware of in regards to this. And he said, learning how to think means being conscious and aware enough to choose what you pay attention to. So in closing, I would say this. Be very conscious of what you're paying attention to. Good luck because you'll need it. If you want to discuss this, please feel free to message me. But note that I will not answer you 
in the first two and a half hours of the day.